Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at the PBS 39 studios at the Steel Stacks campus in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And we're here today with Chef Michael Adams. He's the executive chef of the historic Hotel Bethlehem. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, it's great to be here. Okay, and what's on the menu? So, uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, ceviche. Uh, we're gonna do two different kinds. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna do a shrimp, and we're gonna do a halibut. Very nice. And then um, we have uh, some nice uh, fresh uh, spring and late winter ingredients that we're going to use. I think we'll start with the shrimp. They're huge. Um, yes, they are. And so what I'm going to do is um, we are going to uh, dice these real small, almost like tartare style. Mm -hmm. And then that'll speed up the um, the process of, of which the, uh, the, the acid will We'll start to uh, denaturize the proteins in the mm -hmm. shrimp, and uh, it'll it'll quicken up that process. So this, when you dice it this small, you only need about 15 minutes, 20 okay. minutes on this to be in that wonderful mixture of. Uh, we're going to use some lemon juice and some uh, some some other ingredients, and, nice. and we'll get to that when we get there. What size are these shrimp? Are these so these are pounds? these are six to eight uh, Ooh, wow. count shrimp, so six to eight per pound, and um, they're a white shrimp. Um, and they are going to be wonderful in this. Uh, absolutely. I guess you wouldn't have to use a shrimp this big because we're cutting them down. No, absolutely not. Um, you can use rock shrimp. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer rock shrimp. They're uh, nice and buttery and mm -hmm. sweet, but this is what we use at the hotel. And this is some wonderful halibut you have too. Yes, some nice East Coast uh, halibut mm -hmm. that we're going we're gonna to do uh, a, a, a nice... Um, ceviche with that as well. Some Great. different ingredients, but all of the ingredients that we use are going to marry together really well. I mean, both the shrimp and the halibut, the ingredients in both, as you eat it, you know, you'll see when we try it at the end, they're going to marry really well together. Wonderful. Now, where do you source most of your seafood from? So, um, I have a couple of uh, different uh, suppliers. Um, I use uh, the Northern Tier Fish Company. Mm -hmm. They're out of Washington State. Uh, I get that um, the fish shipped direct. Wow. Uh, mostly wild salmon um, and Pacific halibut from them. Um, I also use a um, uh, local company, uh, Samuel and Sons, out of Philadelphia we love um, them. as well, um, and um, a few others. Great. But, um, so we're just going to take the, uh, the shrimp here. Mm -hmm. It looks like enough, and pull it apart a little bit. We'll mix that up later. But um, And then we have some uh, spring onion. We're going to use both the white and the green. These, again, were just harvested this morning uh, from uh, Liberty Gardens in Coopersburg, one of my f uh, farmer friends who I've been buying from for probably 10 years now. So wow. probably longer, more like 15 years. That's a long time. Yeah, and... Uh, he really uh, does a great job. So we're just going to mince this up. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about your restaurants over at the historic Hotel Bethlehem. You have two? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our uh, 1741 Terrace and we have our tap room. The okay, uh, 1741 Terrace is um, our fine dining restaurant and uh, we do uh, more seasonal menus in, the, in, in, in 1741. So we change the menu uh, six times a year. It's a lot. It is and we also have some stables that we have on there. We have something called the 1741 Classics. Okay. And uh, we um, we have some lamb chops and strip steak sure. and filet, you know, some some dishes that I think people have are, are comfortable with and, yep. and um, you know, they can come in and get that anytime. Sure, they'd be upset um, if you ever took them off the menu. There's no question. <laughs> um, but they also look forward to all of the new dishes that we introduce uh, for the seasons. Nice. So we, we just put the uh, 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 green onion, uh, I'm sorry, the spring onion in, mm -hmm. in here. And then what I have here is just don't sniff. Too much, but it's um, smoked lemon drop pepper. Whoa, wait, back so, up. Smoked lemon drop right, pepper. Right. Explain. So it's it's a lemon drop is a variety that um, actually a, a farmer friend of mine, Jim Weaver at Meadowview Farm. So not the he, candy. He is no, oh no, not <laughs> by any means. This is this is kind of a hybrid of uh, habaneros, mm -hmm. um, Scotch bonnets, sure. and. Um, the pasilla. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So uh, he does hybrids. So he does that, and then he smokes it, dries it, and turns it into a powder. And nice. it's just it just needs a little bit, but it'll give yeah. a, give a nice smoky dimension to it. Pasillas are more of a mellow heat. Yep. But habanero is clearly real are hot. Fire. Yeah. And uh, he grows 180 different varieties of hot peppers, nice. and he does heirloom tomatoes. Oh, and fantastic! So it's so it's great. Stay tuned for more from the Hotel Bethlehem. 
We're back with more from the Hotel Bethlehem. So we have the, uh, the spring onions in here, and then um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little lemon zest and uh, lemon juice. Okay. Of course, that's gonna be the acid for the shrimp. So tell me a little bit more about the historic Hotel Bethlehem. Sure, so um, we are a historic hotel, so mm -hmm. we are in the registry for um, Historic Hotels of America. We have 128 rooms. Uh, we also have uh, uh, huge banquet facilities, up to uh, 300 people for wow. weddings. Must um, do a lot of weddings then. We do, we do. Um, and, you know, rehearsal dinners and bridal, um, uh, afternoon bridal showers, showers and, like yep. that. Yeah. and corporate events, lots of por corporate events. And we have our tap room. We do change the menu seasonally there as mm -hmm. well, um, but those are a little more comfort dishes than than our, our fine dining in 1741. To get back to the um, the ceviche, we, we, we have our, our green onions, our lemon zest, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna take just a little bit of lemon juice in here. And oh, the uh, smoked lemon drop pepper. Right. That is what is going to make that really, really add a great dimension to this. Nice. So we're just gonna take the lemon juice, and we're gonna juice two lemons in there. You need a lot of acid for ceviche. You do. Great. And no seeds. Yeah. <laughs> Now, is this something I could find on the menu at one of your restaurants, or even both? Uh, so we would run something like this as an addition to the menu. Mm -hmm. This is probably something we don't run all the time, just because of the amount of business that fluctuates. Sure. So we'll usually do that, you know, on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, for the weekend. The last thing we're going to do here is we're just going to take some, um, a little bit of cilantro, cilantro. of course. Um, I love cilantro, but it's one of those herbs not everybody's into. This is so true. You love it or hate it. Yeah, people find know? it soapy, but... I love the stuff. Yeah. It just tastes really fresh to mm -hmm. me. Like it just gives it a... Yeah, it really brightens it up. It's almost yep. kind of lemony. Yep. Okay, so we're going to add that in, and we'll give that a little stir. And you said this takes about 20 minutes or so? So we're going to leave this go for about 20 minutes. Okay. And um, we're going to add just a little bit of olive oil in here. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to let that go now. It smells so lemony and fresh. Yeah, it's... Can you smell a little oh, bit totally. of that smoke? Do you smell the smoke in there too? Barely, Isn't it's that, really yeah, subtle. Yeah, it's really nice. So then uh, our next dish here, we're gonna do the East Coast halibut. Now could you substitute a different kind of fish in this recipe if you didn't have halibut? So sure, um, mm -hmm. you could do um, you could do flounder, you could do fluke. Okay. Uh, you could do um, any kind of lighter, you know, flesh fish, you know, flounder, fluke. So stay away from yeah. your salmon. Tunas. Yeah, mahi. I would yeah. recommend no? anything okay. with a high, you know, real high fat content. I would sea probably bass, stay away right. from. Yeah, for the halibut, we are going to do this with. This is very simple. We're going to do some orange juice, fennel. What do we have here, really. Those are. Looks like a carrot it's, top. It's just the shoot, and it's so. Mm. The, again, those were just mm. harvested this morning. Mm -hmm. They're they're so. Uh, it, it, I can't even say, I can't even describe it because it's so. It's just barely anisey. Right. It's really got a nice green, mm -hmm. bright flavor to it. And it's sweet. Like it it's is. very sweet. It is. Um, so we're just gonna cut. We're gonna do this a little different. Okay. And I'm just gonna do thin slices. So I'm just gonna take this, cut real. So much bigger pieces in the shrimp. Yep. And through the, you know, the acid breaking it down a little bit, it's going to break up when we. Yep. So you're almost slicing it like a uh, sashimi. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can see how pristine and fresh the fish is. It absolutely is. And it's absolutely necessary for ceviche. ceviche. Completely necessary. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take that, and mm -hmm. then we're gonna take a little bit of uh, fresh grated ginger root. Nice. And we're gonna take the outside off. This is great light spring summer food. Yeah. Do you find your busiest in the summertime in Hotel Bethlehem, or I would think even during the holidays? Um, I would say December is our busiest season. You know, we are sure. the we are the Christmas city, so um, you know there's tons of events going on mm -hmm. um, all you know all over Bethlehem. Sure. The, the, the shows and the. Um, the shopping and speaking of shopping we do have a gift shop amazing gift shop I'm glad you brought that up because I've been there and it's fabulous it's not anything like what you'd expect a hotel gift shop to be like it's got great clothes and even nice handbags it's really great stuff there 
Yeah, very unique gifts, and 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 the ice cream shop, of course, mm -hmm. and adorable um, little ice cream shop, and cappuccino and espresso, mm -hmm. and um, Penn State ice cream that we serve, mm -hmm. and it's it's really great. I hear you have great hot chocolate too. We do. Uh, we make it with um, cocoa berry chocolate. Nice. And uh, you know, 58 percent. We put a little cinnamon stick and star anise Yum. and vanilla bean. So it's ri it's rich that. and I heavy cream in it. It's Ooh, it's very rich. Cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so can... it's it's really rich. That sounds perfect. Stay tuned for more with Chef Michael Adams. We're back with more from the Hotel Bethlehem. So we have the ginger, mm -hmm. the orange juice, and then we're gonna put a little bit of the chopped fennel. So much different flavor profile going on. Yeah, yeah, but again, um, the marriage of both of these is what's gonna make this, this dish great. Right. Um, and a uh, little fresh ground black pepper. Sure. I'm gonna just add a couple. Perfect, More? Good. perfect. All right, so we're just gonna stir that up. The fennel, the ginger, mm. the halibut, and you know what? I'm going to add a touch of rice vinegar to it too, just a touch, and a little bit of olive oil. Nice. And then we're going to salt that at the very end. So again, uh, about 15 minutes on this. Okay. And Why we're would just you wait until that, the end to salt that? Because uh, you don't want the the structure of the the, um, the the fish to tighten up okay. and, it, and it will get tough because mm -hmm. it's going to draw out that moisture and then it's going to get too firm. Good to know. So, yeah. All right. So then we're going to do it with um, uh, we're going to do it with a little bit. So we're going to serve this with a little bit of I call it a beef carpaccio, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just going to take the beets. Beet carpaccio. Yes. Nice. Beet, and uh, we're just going to take the uh, the the whole gold beets. You can use mm -hmm. red beets and baby beets, candy stripe beets, whatever mm -hmm. whatever you have. Um, we're just going to take a little bit of um, olive oil, and uh, we're going to coat the beet just you're a little bit. These? We're going to roast these. Right. Yep. And time. Good question. Probably, I'm gonna say two hours. These are big beets. They are big beets. Yeah. So you know, you just wanna just till they're tender. Um, we're gonna salt them. Mm -hmm. A little bit of salt. And you don't cover them or wrap them in anything. Yeah, we're gonna cover them with um, a little bit of aluminum foil. Okay. And then um, right in the oven. Uh, again, it could be two, two and a half hours mm -hmm. till these are done. Just test them with a knife and see when they goes it, through. That's it. Till they're soft. <laughs> And then back to the little uh, composed kohlrabi salad that we're going to do for uh, both. It's going to complement both dishes. Nice. And you see this popping up on different menus a lot now recently. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's just in the you know it's in the cabbage family mm -hmm. and uh, it has a very again a fresh crunchy fresh mm -hmm. uh, flavor to it. And um, you know I typically won't cook this. Um, I, like I typically serve it raw. It's tough um, to cut through, isn't it? It is. On the bottom, it yeah. is. The, the top is a little, a little easier to get through. But there's, you know, the farmer that I buy from at Liberty Gardens, he grows like three different varieties of kohlrabi, mm -hmm. and they're all ready at a different time. Okay. So it's great. We can get it for quite a few months nice. um, and have that on our menus. I'm so we're, peel this outer skin? Yeah, we're just going to peel your outer skin. And, it, it, you know, if you get it really fresh, mm -hmm. you can peel it with a peeler. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, that would be fine. You don't have to use a knife. You have a better yield on that. But it is a little tough. It is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the bottom off here. And then all we're going to do, I'm going to square the sides off a little. It kind of reminds me the taste of kohlrabi of like the broccoli stems. Yeah, absolutely. And it so smells then, very cabbage -y. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, earthy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so then the other thing that uh, we do at the hotel is we have um, specialty dinners that we do. Oh, okay. uh, we actually have one coming up very soon. It's a France versus Italy really? dinner, and so we do Italian dishes and f French dishes, and, and you're our, our doing two them all? and our two well, most of them. <laughs> uh, our our two managers. It's funny because uh, Eligio, he's from Italy, and Francois. <laughs> They're both dining room managers, so there's this big competition oh, between them so every year. Funny. Yeah, and it's really fun. It's actually it sells out every year. So oh, cool. I think a lot of people look forward to it. But it's going to be a fun dinner, and then um, we'll schedule a mead dinner. Mm -hmm. We have a, a really great mead producer in the Lehigh Valley that started out. I want to say two or three years ago. 
and they're awesome. They just won all yeah. these awards for um, uh, uh, competition in Colorado, um, and they just make awesome mead. Awesome. Um, so we'll do a mead dinner and, and perhaps a bourbon dinner in the fall season. And you just do different pairings with all of yeah. the Yeah, so we'll taste, yeah, they'll bring the, the bourbon or the mead or the beer, whatever mm -hmm. it is we do, and then I'll just create menus that'll complement those dishes. But I've been doing that for a very long time. When I had my restaurant, yeah. we had, um, you know, we had 170 different beers, and, wow. and it, we, that, that's what we were known for. So it's nice to add new dimensions and evolve sure. as you go along that's and, with be a meat lot of and fun. bourbon. And bourbon's fun too, because the complexities. So we're just going to take a little bit of the, the fennel as well. Mm -hmm. And just a coarse chop on that. Okay. And then a little bit of the spring onion. And now, is this going to be for the halibut? Or so this is going to complement both. Both, okay. So this is going to be presented in between the um, the uh, the halibut and the shrimp. Now tell me about spring onions because they have this little bulb on the end, but they sort sure. of look like scallions. What's sure. the difference? So the spring onions, you know, th these are you know, obviously only available in the spring. Mm -hmm. They're um, they're a much milder onion. Mm -hmm. They haven't been in the ground as long, so it's just a milder flavor. All right. And the green does taste a lot taste. like a scallion. Yeah. So we're just going to mince some of the spring onion, and we're just going to do a little bit of the kohlrabi. Great julienne, by the way. Thank you. And the uh, fennel and the spring onion, and a little bit of olive oil. Just pour a little bit of olive oil in there. Perfect. So we'll do a little butt crumb, butt pepper. Stay tuned for more from the Hotel Bethlehem. We're back with Chef Michael Adams of the Hotel Bethlehem. Let's get some rice wine vinegar, a little bit of salt. I notice you cook with a lot of rice wine vinegar. I do. Um, I just like it. I think it's a neutral and it's a little mm -hmm. sweeter. Yeah. Um, and especially on spring dishes, mm -hmm. um, when I get into winter dishes, more um, sherry and sure. banul, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and balsamic, you know, mm -hmm. aged balsamic. Um, and so this is this is it. This is all you have to do for this Simple. dish. Yeah, we're going to add a couple of pea tendrils, uh, pea shoots to this. Mm -hmm. And then that is just going to be a nice, crispy, fresh salad to serve with the uh, right. ceviche. Mm -hmm. Just going to give that a gentle toss. And then let's go and see if we need anything in the ceviche. You can see how the shrimp has oh, already totally. started to, yep. right? It's starting to turn that opaque color. Yeah, it's really firmed up too. Yeah. And the halibut as well. You can see mm -hmm. the outer edges there starting to turn a little bit. How long can you keep ceviche before it starts to get a little overdone? So I wouldn't even keep it overnight. If okay. you're going to make it, I would suggest making it that day mm -hmm. if you want it you know, to be great. Um, can you eat it the next day? Sure. Is it going to mm -hmm. be as good? No. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. just going to be tough. The fish yep. gets tough. Okay, so now we're ready to plate. Great. So first we're going to start off with the, uh, the beet that we roasted. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just going to do a really fine, uh, thin slices. Just peel the skin right off of that after it roasted. As soon as it comes out of the oven, just wrap it in plastic wrap in a bowl. Mm -hmm. Leave that go for about 15, 20 minutes till it cools down, and then the peel, the skin will come right off. Great. So we're just going to cut thin slices of the beet. Such a good color. I love golden beets. Yeah, and they're delicious. Mm -hmm. They'll go great with this dish. It adds slightly a nice milder <coughs> flavor, I think, too. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so let's go over and complete the dish. All right, so we have our halibut. You can see it's just starting to turn opaque. Yep. Which is exactly what you want. Yeah, you don't want it to turn fully, you know, mm -hmm. full that white, you know, you know, fully cooked looking. Right. You want it just as it starts to turn. So then we have the shrimp ceviche. And I'll tell you, the, 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 the smoked uh, lemon drop pepper in here and the sweet beet, that crunchy, earthy kohlrabi, the pea shoots, just everything together. And uh, the fennel, just, am, just this, amazing. This is going to be a winning dish. It looks like it anyway. This is beautiful. That pop from the beet underneath is just gorgeous. All right, well, I've got us some beautiful white wine. 
Yes, did I do. mention the spectacular wine list we have? You did not, but it's great to hear about it. We do. We have a really nice wine list, and you know, it's it's built around the cuisine that we serve, so it's really Fantastic. nice. Fantastic. Well, cheers. Thanks cheers. for having being on the show today. Mmm, that's gonna go great with this. It sure is. All right. All right. I'm gonna start with the halibut. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. This is amazing. You've done a great job with this. Mm. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna say cheers one more time. I can't wait to come visit you at the historic Hotel Bethlehem, and we can't wait to have you back here on the Chef's Kitchen. You've been a pleasure. Thanks. The Lehigh Valley's premier hotel, Historic Hotel Bethlehem, is perfect for any stay. Offering two restaurants by notable chef Michael Adams, 1741 on the terrace, an upscale dining experience, and the tap room, a casual restaurant. Guests enjoy 24-hour room service, along with the shop at Hotel Bethlehem, featuring Penn State Creamery ice cream, and offering the finest in accessories. Two beautiful ballrooms and ample meeting space make Historic Hotel Bethlehem the place to host your next event. Stay with us at Historic Hotel Bethlehem and feel at home. great kitchen. The people here are just amazing to work with. It's a really fun set. Just the opportunity to be here is great.